every kid who grows up in New York grows up pretty fast. Um, it's astonishing. <laughs> I've had depression, like clinical depression, for like my entire adolescence. Um, and so that's been something that I've always dealt with um, or not known how to deal with. It made it easier, like the more I drank and did drugs, to share some common ground with people that I wouldn't have. It didn't start out as like a huge thing for me, but then it became a really huge thing for me. When I went away to college, I didn't really do the proper um, mental and emotional work to prepare myself. I kind of just thought that um, all my problems would go away if I just got on a plane and flew 3,000 miles. I, I went to class. I have always been somebody that goes to class all the time. But I just didn't really understand what I had to be doing to be a successful student. And then that compared with, um, I guess, like a little bit of insecurity not about myself but about like physical insecurity with where I was and I kind of just kept like reasoning and like using this really fake rationale that like was so justified to me that I could keep doing this stuff and be like oh I won't drink and then I would just like smoke weed and then I would be like oh I'm not gonna smoke weed and then I just drink like it was kind of just bartering um, <laughs> for equally bad outcomes. <laughs> My therapist, um, who I'm so grateful for, she did me the biggest service ever. Um, she referred me to uh, a outpatient treatment center um, in New York City. I was looking for a institutional um, group therapy sort of thing where I could just um, work with other people around my age on these issues of depression and anxiety um, that I was facing. My mom was trying really hard to uh, help me, just like, you know, any little thing she could. I mean, my dad was doing the same, but obviously he was really busy. Um, but, you know, they were both very emotionally committed to trying to figure out some way to get me better. Removing substances from my life, it's opened so many doors for me like I was actually able to participate in my dad's campaign and that was like the greatest thing ever and you know now I'm doing well in school and actually getting to explore things that aren't just partying um, and I think it's just important for people to realize anybody who is watching this that if you're suffering and if you're depressed you're dealing with mental illness and you think that it might have something to do with your drug abuse or drinking, or if you're just suffering from both of those at the same time and you think that they're completely unrelated to one another, that getting sober is always a positive thing. Um, and it's not easy, by no means is it easy. It's the hardest thing I've ever done, but it's so worth it. There's still so much work that needs to be done in modifying the way that we think about alcoholism and drug addiction because a lot of people still fail to acknowledge that it's a disease. We're not providing enough treatment. We're not making it an open enough environment for discussion. I wanted to speak out because people are suffering from this disease and dying from this disease every day. Um, and we really can't do anything as a society to help those people until we start talking about it. And nobody can do sobriety on their own. You really just have to keep on relying on those that have been there, um, finding people that have gone through it, um, being honest, open, and willing. Um, and you will see the most immense change that you've ever seen before.